I've decided to make another loaf of sourdough bread and I thought I would show you with a video how it's done. So I do have the recipe on the website as well, but sometimes a video just makes things a little bit easier. I've actually never made sourdough before. Well, not until a few weeks ago. I always thought it was too hard. And to be honest, we usually eat keto and low carb, so we don't eat a whole lot of bread. I'm about to G up my sourdough starter because I would like to make a loaf of bread tomorrow. I always thought sourdough was too hard to make, but now I've made it a few times using an incredible starter from a friend named Mick. He gave it to me the other week and my mum's recipe. It's pretty much foolproof. So my starter has been in the fridge for a little while. It's asleep. What I need to do is according to Mick or what Mick calls it, G it up. Now it's just me in here. So I've got the GoPro. So bear with me. I'm going to have to take you into the bathroom and show you how it's made. I just realized how odd that sounded take you into the bathroom. So I have a large ensuite in our caravan and this is where my Thermomix and my air fryer live. So this is where I do, you know, these sorts of things. For the starter to G it up, you want to do equal amounts. So the same amount weight wise of starter, water and flour. So I just use the scales on my Thermomix because my smaller digital scales died. Container is sitting on the top. I'll just pop you up there on top of the air fryer. So I've got my scales measuring. I'm going to pop about 100 grams of starter in here. Easy. And then I'm going to add 100 grams of water. That was 110. So I'm going to put an extra dollop of starter in there. As you can see, I'm very accurate. And then it looks like this. So I'm gonna give it a mix around until that's a little bit incorporated. A little bit incorporated? I think you know what I mean. So I'm giving it a mix. Might, might mix it down here so I don't spill it. Pop it back up. Reset the scales. Now we're going to pop the flour in. So I did 110 of starter, 110 of water, so now I'm going to do 110 of flour. Oh, try not to make too much of a mess. All right, and that was 135, so it pays to be a little bit more accurate than me. Radio, there we go. And now we just stir that in. I'll show you what that looks like looks like flour and water <laughs> and then we just stir it okay I'm gonna come back out to the kitchen now so once you've stirred it all in this is when the process gets really tricky so now we just leave it it looks like this and over the next few hours, mix it in properly, over the next few hours, it is just going to do its thing. It's going to come alive. It's going to start to bubble up and it will probably double in size. So while I'm at the gym, this is doing its doubling thing. The key to a good sourdough, I believe, apart from a good recipe, is a really good starter. Now this one was shared with me probably about four or five weeks ago now by a guy named Mick who had it for two years and he got it off a lady who's had it for 25 years. So this starter is 27 years old and it is perfect. Just while I'm cleaning up, I thought I'd explain something. Um, we are keto slash low carb. So we don't actually eat bread, which is why I've never tried to make sourdough before. But if you are in the maintenance phase, which I most definitely am, because I've been doing keto slash low carb for like seven or eight years now, uh, it's okay to have a little bit of sourdough every now and again. So we don't like to eat bread, but we love bread. Um, so I do not make any more than one loaf of this a week. So that's <laughs> Just a bit of a warning, if you are following keto and low carb, do not make this recipe because it, is, because it is so delicious, you will want to just eat it all the time. So that's that's my word of warning. Well, I'm back from the gym. It's been about two hours, so it's 11.30 now, so I'm going to show you what the starter looks like now. So you can see it's risen quite a bit, 
and it's bubbly. I'm going to leave it there for another, probably another hour. I'm back in the bathroom, butler's kitchen, pantry, whatever, um, and I'm about to pop everything into the Thermomix. So I'm going to show you how that's done. It's actually really, really simple. So once again, I'll pop you up here on the air fryer. So scales in the Thermomix. There we go. Nice and easy. So we're going to put in 160 to 200 grams of starter. So it's just going to go in So I've got my 200 grams of starter. Now I'm going to put in my reset the scales and put in my 230 ml of water. Carefully. Sit it up. Reset scales. And now I'm going to put in my 400 grams of baker's flour. So I'm gonna take a risk I'm probably going to regret and pour it in. 400 grams. <coughs> 405, that's fine. And then it's as simple as you can see in there. It's just all in the thermomix, popping the lid on. And then dough mode down here. I'm going to put it on for oops, five minutes and off we go. And then go and do whatever you need to do and come back when it dings. And because I'm me, I forgot the salt. It's probably going to be too late, but I'm putting it in there anyway. Add the salt when you add everything else. <laughs> now while that's in there doing its thing, this is what was left over from what I just G'd up this morning. This is what goes in the fridge. So I'm just going to pop the rest of that into there because I can. <laughs> and there we have our dough, which is perfect. You can also do this by hand, of course but I just find this really easy. Because I'm baking it in the air fryer, I'm just gonna give it this baking dish, which comes with the air fryer, or it's an accessory for the um, air fryer, a bit of a spray with coconut oil. And I'm just going to, I don't know if you can see it, because it's on the bench, just tip it out. Hang on, it needs two hands. baking dish now I'm just going to kind of pat it down a little bit so I've just placed a tea towel over the top and I'm just going to leave it here for a few hours before I pop it into the fridge <laughs> on the bread it's day two and this is what it looks like been in the fridge now for two days you can see there I'm just going to take off carefully and that's what it looks like so now I'm going to leave it here we're going to go out to dinner I'm just going to leave it here 
to come to temperature or to room temperature because it's really cold. And then we're going to bake it later on tonight. Well, we're back from dinner. I've just preheated the air fryer. I'm just going to pop it in the air fryer. I'm going to pop it up to 200 for 10 minutes. I actually forgot. Usually, I put a bit of milk with a brush, but I don't have a brush, so I just kind of spread it over the top. <laughs> and then, for a start. So after 10 minutes, we look like this. And what I'm going to do now is take it out, flip it over, and put it back in. This is really hard to film with one hand, but I'm going to try. Normally, you use two hands to flip it out. Alright, let's see how we go. <laughs> it's really hot. Okay. All good. No other worry. And the temperature to 180 and we've got 20 minutes now alrighty so the finished product here we go pull it out give it a knock sounds pretty good again one-handed not ideal but we'll flip it over And there we go. Beautiful loaf of sourdough bread. See, and what you can hear is someone in there. I'm coming up and over the top. No, you're not. Hello. <laughs> throwing things at me. Anyway, there we go. Sourdough bread. Delicious. So we're not going to cut the bread straight away because it's really important to let the bread cool down first. Otherwise it'll be all doughy or could be all doughy and yucky in the middle. So wait for it to cool down as tempting as it might be to cut it open straight away. Would you like some fresh bread for breakfast? Hmm? Would you like some fresh bread for breakfast? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Guess I better cut it open then. Right. And there we have it. A perfect loaf of sourdough bread. Mm. 